What is up, YouTube? How's it going, everyone? It's Sparky Marky Mark here, and I'm going to do a little review and unboxing for a certain item. But what you're looking at here, before I get to this unboxing, how you all been and everything, and of course, another day in isolation, of course, which, oh well, who knows these days? Just be safe and take care, including your families, and God bless you. Also, um, I just need to tell you all, today is the birthday of the king of B-plus low-budget films, creature features, and exploitation action films, Roger Corman, who, of course, we know him as the king of B-plus low-budget films, who, of course, did direct and launch careers of some actors and directors. Uh, but I'll provide you a link in the description box for the, um, uh, what is it, the movie Magic which is the creature articulations. And also he worked on other projects and such. So yeah, today he's 94, wow, 94, yo. Heck, he's a legend for by crying out loud. Roger Corman, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, let's get down to this unboxing. Um, here's the history of the Mud Man, dated back to 1985 of course, but that is known as the very first Masters of G, of course. The very first Masters of G, which you're looking at here. Um, let me see if I can get this camera in. Okay, okay, here we go. Now, dated back to 1985 with this very first piece right here that you're looking on the right, of course, which I'll get to this one, to the DW5500. Let's see. Okay. This came out in the mid-80s of 1985 with action films like Commando and also um, other films and music such as The Breakfast Club, the film Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me. So anyway, this, what you're looking at here is the G-Shock 2 5500, production end of August of 1985. And... Of course, it had the same case back as the DW5500 and the 5200, and it was a stainless steel case screw back in its G-Shock 2, which this is a sequel, of course, so, yeah, alright, but unfortunately, this had, this had to be so-called, um, strong sand and mud dust, dirt dust proof anti-model feature. It was distributed, in other course, as a mud man. Unfortunately, when this came out to the public, it was not well received by the public. These are considered collectibles. They're not how you call it resistant to mud. It sounds to me at the time of Cassie, at the time of G-Shock, of course, um, it turns out that um, I believe that somebody in Casio made a rush production of the watch and made it and made this very quick to meet the, the demands, of course. And unfortunately, it wasn't well loved and received by the public. So considering these are very rare, those are collectibles. I, they're not how you would call it. You want to play in the mud or do BMX biking. This is not the kind of watch for you. But it was featured in the wrist of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the final sequence in The Running Man, of course, with singer actress Maria, what was that actress's name? If I. Oh well, it's Maria Conchata who went on to be in Part Predator 2 that year. And um, um just to be clear, and she um uh, what else? Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that actress. But this was featured in Arnold Schwarzenegger's wrist in the running man, in the final act of that film. And I don't I have no it wasn't even appeared in much feature films, but it's considered to be collectible and very rare to keep track of or track down exactly but if they're gonna make a comeback with this don't put it as a mud resist put it as a um a different kind of watch in the next video i'll show you a different watch that looks like this but it's not a g-shock 2 so yeah so now second generation came out in the mid 90s of 1995 let's take a look here 1995 with the DW8400-1 and the DW8400G-1. This is a, uh, a so what is it the other? This is the basic version and this is the gold version because you could tell by right here where I'm pointing out, 
is the gold, of course. The eye of over here is gold. And these got, this is a drilling, and this became like, okay, second slash first generation Mudman. Then there was the Digi Analog Mudman, which got some love and hate. This came out in 1997, two years later, of course. And of course, coincidentally, you have this one, the DW, okay. I'm gonna start with the analogs with the um, AW570-1A, the, the AW570-9A, and of course, these two right here, the AW570-Z-1T, and the DW, Men in Black, Men in Black, and DW8400-Z-1, T, Men in Black. So coincidentally, this was 1997, and Men in Black, starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. Of course, that came out that year, the as the film came out. So what a coincidence there. One year later, in 1999, I mean 1998, during the height of the teen horror slasher genre, um, DW 8400 dash 9T, Men in Yellow. And of course, the W8400 BM 1T Men in Black. So, Men in Yellow, Men in Black. I can't even tell which was representing all oh, the icons that are in the backlight on this one. So, yeah, it's too. Some of these pieces right here, even right here that came out in the late 90s, known as the Men in Navy and Khaki, DW84NK 3JR, which is right here. Just to clear on this stuff. All right, right there. That came out sometime in the summer of 99, and this is the re-adaptation to this one five years later, but this is entering 2000, which is the DW8400 GP-1JO Mudman 2000. DW8400 LG-8JR Men in White Gray. Oh, you can tell right here, this is a bit of a year of the serpent, I believe, or the dragon. This is... A, this was early 2000s. Then, of course, you have this in 2001. The Real Black, DW8400BK-1MJF, Real Black. Then, of course, six years later, oh, 2001 was the year I turned 10 that year, and I was, um, the year I was, I mean, I turned 10 that year, and I was about to leave elementary school, and then after that, went on to sixth grade. Then, of course, in 2007, six years later, I was a sophomore, then entering 11th grade. This came out. The very first, this one is the, um, known as to this day, the second generation. Uh, before that, huh, the year's a little messed up. Huh. Actually, five years later, in 2006, you had your very first DW, I mean, the GW 9000-1, or the dash one JF, of course known as to this day the five eye monster which is very rare now it has a, this is one of their icons and it has a dish and it's got a drill this is a solar atomic mud resist these right here they're camo flush gw g9000 mc adr camouflage g9000 mc 3dr camouflage ah and with that, let me put music to entering 2007. Let's get it all started. Alrighty. Okay, let's get back to the charts. Of course, and then G9000 AVDR. Oh, let me put the volume a little down. Oh. Okay, let's get, okay. And then this is the plain, this is the white or the vanilla version. And this is the G9000 3BDR. This is like all green. And this is the basic version, the G9000 1 BDR. The positive display, this is negative display. And then, of course, 2007. I was 15 in 06, and then I was 16 in 2007 of the G9000 
9000 TLC 4DR. TLC, don't get confused with the music group called TLC. No, it's for the Toyota Land Cruiser. Other words, Team Land Cruiser. And then in 2008, we had we had another version of the G9000, but this is the Men in Blue version. And this is the 25th anniversary of the G9000 G9025A-1JF, part of the Dawn Black Edition. Then there's the orange combination, which you can see here. The G9000R-4DR, G-Shock Rescue. It's orange and it has an icon on here, which is gonna show a fireman's axe. And then you have the, the G9010, dash 1dr but this is a solar atomic and each of these icons basically on the regulars right here except for the solar atomic the regular straight battery power would have their icons with the mo with a uh, dirt cart that's what you call it of course and then you had in 2009 i turned 18 that year and i was done with high school finito Say hi to the GW9010MB-1DR, the ion plated, ion platin. It's all negative display, all black everywhere. Solar Atomic Mudman. I believe this is just a regular solar version. This is multiband. And it has the same one as the GW9000 right here. What a coincidence. Then you have the military style version, the G9000MS-1DR, Ion Platin. Then you have your motocrosses, which you look right here. Between this red, black and orange and red and white and all blue version. Now this one is the G9000MX-ADR motocross. G9000MX-4DR motocross and the G9000MX-2RD motocross. And those are basically something for a part of the Kobe Psyche colors and other things. Some of these are rare, or, and some of these here are rare as well, the camo editions. These, you can still find it. And then in 2009, at the time I was, like a year I was done after high school, I was living the real life world, doing other things with family and working places. Um, okay, then we had the King Squares, the big King Squares, which I'll show you in the next video. And, um, started with this one, but there's a Japanese version that has multiband. This is known as the GX 5600-1ADR. Then the G, then it, but in Japan, of course, they released the GXW 56. This is negative display, but with black and red, and this is a gold, a yellow gold version, I believe. GX, GX 56 dash BDR, one BDR, and this is an orange version with black and orange. GX 56 dash four DR. Then of course you have the blue and black, which is the GX 56 dash 56 E dash one ADR. Then of course you have this first collaboration here with DGK. If you heard my previous video on that one, and I was talking about the Jasons, it's known as DGK for Dirty Ghetto Kids for skateboarders. That been a, that that name DGK has been around since the nineties, of course. And in two thousand eleven, when I turned twenty, of course, again living life in the real, living life and such even to the fullest. Um, then you had different variations of these. Dated back to around spring, these two came out, the black and purple editions. The G the G9000BP-1DR, BP stands for BAPE, B-A-B-E. Then of course you had the solar version, the G9010BP-1DR. Then you have the GX 56 GB 1 DR glossy black. You can tell it's a little gold on the, on the display as well as the numbers. Then you have your very first Solar Atomic Mudmans. And these are under the G9300 series. And I gotta say, the drills right here, they look kind of big right here. 
and of course it, it's a twin sensor versions. This is the regular, the G9300-1DR. Then there's the G9300GB-1DR, glossy black, and you can tell there's a little gold, but it's negative display. Then you have the um, the G9, the G9000, the G9300GY-1DR, stealthy gray, lodging green, because you can tell some of these are gray. The part is gray, and some letterings and stuff are um, a little bit green around. And then you have the khaki green GX56 KG 3DR. And it's been, yeah. You know, and I'll get to the further versions of generations of greens to come. But oh yeah, I forgot 2012 there. <laughs> now for this one. Alright, let's begin back to the actual ones. The G9300. The G9300 dash, I mean 9300 ER 5DR, earth tones. You can tell this is like earth colors of the dirt and the planet if you see it from a long distance. Then you have this one that's under a nickname, perhaps the Joker or something. But it's part of the Love to See in the Earth GW9300 K 3JR. And. It's very good colors, and it shows the earth, of course, of the animals when you backlight this. That's rare now, and so is this one. Well, these, of course, because they're because these are collaborations with Earth Tones, Love the Scene Earth, and this red one right here with gold display is known as the G ninety three thirty A, raising rising red thirtieth anniversary prior to twenty thirteen, of course, and um. Yeah, this is like the, up till 2013, I'll get to the future Mudmans, of course. So, let's get down to 2007, y'all. Let's see what it is, y'all. Let's see, let's see. Let's be patient, y'all. Warranty card. Whoa. <laughs> Module 3031. And. Oh, it's definitely it. And as you can tell, what I have here, my what I have it on the watch here, um, it's it's on a bull bar that I got from a, a place called J&K. They're associated with the military, of course. And of course, throughout 2015, I did wear this piece, but you could tell I didn't even bang it too much or abused it. I just like, you know, took it with me to places and such, but I cleaned it to the last details, scrub it up, up everywhere. So yeah, this one here, dual illuminator. And of course, with that, let me just show you the lighting on this. Heck. Like, way dual illuminators. Heck, it lights up the letters, of course. And of course, let's see the... I mean, these buttons are very tough to press, so you have to be very patient with... Stopwatch. Stopwatch 2. In this section... Um... That it would when you start when you press stopwatch one, it would start doing the measuring the times like here, and then the second will be doing up here. But with that, I'll show you with this one. Heck, all right, stopwatch one. Okay, that's an indicator to tell you it's moving, and over here is telling you the meter of the watch. Okay. While well, that one's still beeping, if you do the second one, same thing, and it's beeping. My personal favorite of them all is the timer, because when the timer starts, right now it's all blacked out here, because it starts doing like that once the countdown is activated. And then you have your alarms, starting with snooze, alarm one, 
two, three, four, signal, and then you have your snooze. Then you have your world time, NYC, and then you have back to your home time. Oh, speaking of which, gotta deactivate the stopwatch. Uh, let's see, this is how you erase, start new. Alrighty, and of course, like I told you before about their icons of the Masters of G. This is the first Master of G that we got. Um, let me see if I can press this carefully. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to use this kind of camera, but it's kind of easy at the same time. There it is, a mole with its um, steering wheel, and you could tell that's dirt right there. Mm-hmm. To tell you, this is the mud resist all the way. Going the back, of course. And I gotta say, this is a fun watch to anybody, of course, the collectors out there. If you're listening to this, this is a mud man all the way. And it's written right there in yellowish letterings or gold letterings. And yep, mud resist. And the band itself is a mud resist. And the number for this one, let me see if I go closely, 718GD21PUR. Uh, let me just, of course, I have to concentrate on one part of the background. But I just told you what it is right there. And same thing here, but also dual buckles. This is the best part all the G-Shocks, dual buckles. Heck. So. Give a shout out to G-Shock High Fashion, mostly Casio watch reviews, and um, who else, man? Oof, G-Shock Go, Crisp, Crispy, of course, if you're listening to this, G-Shock Warrior 3 ones, one, one, one. No, he's changed his name again. But I'll leave a link to one of his videos and their videos as well about Mudmans. This centers about the history of the Mudmans. And anybody does motocrossing or play around around the muds, you definitely need to wear that. Because that's something you definitely gonna want to wear. Either a straight battery power, solar atomic versions, or now they release the bigger versions now. Of not of this, of course. But anyway, I mean it's fun to talk about the mud man's and it's definitely gonna want to be something. I mean I used to play in the mud only one time, but nowadays <laughs> I'm not much doing that anymore, but I wish I could for old time's sake. So anyway, this is Barky Marky Mark. I'm signing out and be safe out there and God bless you all.